Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a preview of some of the latest news coming out of Thailand and Southeast Asia. Thailand to offer grace period for foreigners visa extensions. China suspends two Thai airlines over Chinese coronavirus cases. The Thai Air Force commander blames Egyptian soldiers for the fiasco in Rayong and the spread perhaps of a second wave of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. The United States backs nations whose South China Sea claims China has violated. Hello there, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and other stories coming right up. Now for the latest news on visas for foreigners in Thailand. Thailand to offer grace periods for foreigners and visa extensions. Bangkok, Thailand on Friday said it would give foreigners a grace period until September to apply for visa extensions as it eases restrictions amid the pandemic, a senior official has stated. The situation in the country and overseas has improved. Immigration Bureau Commissioner Simpong Chindayang said, So we do not propose to extend visas after July the 31st, but allow visa requests from August the 1st to September the 26th, he said, adding the grace period will be proposed to Cabinet for approval, after which, if a request was not made and the visa expired, overstay will be considered illegal. Thailand has granted foreigners automatic visa extensions twice so far to prevent long queues at immigration. The country has gone seven weeks without confirmed local transmission. It was reported 3,239 infections and 58 deaths. The Civil Aviation Administration of China announced that it was banning all Thai Air Asia X and Thai Lion air flights to the mainland from July the 20th to the 27th as punishment for bringing Chinese coronavirus patients into the country. Five passengers traveling Thai Air Flight XJ808 from Dongmyeon Airport to Tanjane were infected as were six passengers on Thai Lion Air SL117 from Bangkok to Guangzhou. The flights were operated on July the 7th. Both flights had been chartered to pick up Chinese civilians in Kuala Lumpur and Jakarta. The suspension of the two flights will last for one week starting on July the 20th. To further contain the spread of the Chinese coronavirus, a reward and a suspension mechanism was introduced by the CAAC. On June the 4th, according to the CAAC, policy if all inbound patients on an airline test negative for Chinese coronavirus for three weeks in a row the operating airline will be allowed to increase its numbers of flights to two per week if the number of passengers test positive reaches five the airlines flight will be suspended for a week China's carrot and stick and if you don't know what that means a system in which you are rewarded for some actions and threatened with punishment for others okay so here we go again Chinese carrot carrot and stick. Aviation policy calls for airlines operating Chinese coronavirus freeze flights to expand their number of weekly inbound flights with those who bring the virus being suspended for a number of weeks depending on how many infected passengers are aboard. So let's get this straight. Asia X Thailand and Lion Air Thailand were hired by the Chinese Communist Party to bring back their nationals from Indonesia and Malaysia. The Lion Air aircraft had to stop in Bangkok to refuel on its way to China. The Air Asia X flight had to stop in Bangkok to receive a new number to fly into Chinese airspace. During this time, both planes passengers did not leave the aircraft. When they arrived in China, it was found that five on one plane and six on the other had the Chinese coronavirus. 
Chinese Communist Party, don't you think you should have had your nationals checked for the Chinese coronavirus before you put Thailand's aircraft at risk of catching the Chinese coronavirus? Just amazes me why you didn't use your own aircraft to rescue your Chinese nationals. And you suspend them to teach them a lesson? Thai Royal Air Force Chief ACM Manit Wangawat finally responded to a query on the case of an infected Egyptian soldier who also with other Egyptian military personnel was allowed to stay in Thailand from July the 8th to the 11th. The Air Force Chief said the group was in Thailand for a short break, refuelling as part of an international agreement. The Air Force commander also blamed Egyptian soldiers fiasco on a loophole. A stopover by military aircraft on a long haul flight for refueling and to rest the crew and passengers was normal international practice, the commander stated. Opening the air space for foreign aircraft is normal, as air space is not within country's territory but is actually under international control. When Thailand soldiers fly on missions to other countries, we also have coordination with them to open their skies. So we can land for refueling or short breaks in line with international law, the Air Chief Marshal said. He also added that other aircraft had landed in Thailand to refuel, but no such problem had occurred. Air Force Chief Manet added that Chinese coronavirus has caused problems across the world, but 180 countries are connected and may sometimes need to adjust conditions to protect their people. There is a loophole that needs to be corrected. We can't isolate ourselves from the 180 countries, but hopefully we can fix the leak once the Chinese coronavirus outbreak is over or a vaccine is available, he said. Thailand, Rayong police drag off protesters minutes before the PM arrives. Yes, two protesters in Rayong province were taken into custody and forcibly removed yesterday after they raised signs condemning the Prime Minister minutes before his motorcade arrived. Amid fury in Rayong over government's mishandling of imported cases of Chinese coronavirus, two Thai nationals prepared to greet Prime Minister Priyat Chinacha with signs criticizing his government were taken into custody. The two signs read, if you stay longer the country would be in ruins. Get out you bastard. Bit harsh. Oh and the other one, don't lower your guard my ass. <laughs> the latter refers to daily words of wisdom from health officials for people to keep their guards up. The two men were seen taken away in a rayong police vehicle, both of them resisting arrest, asking, what crime had I committed? Tell me first what I did wrong. Nachanon said he was put into a headlock by an officer as he was forced into a pickup truck. Penapong was also being forced by at least five officers into the vehicle. The two men were charged with violating the emergency degree which since March was granted sweeping powers to the authorities ostensibly to prevent the spread of the Chinese coronavirus though it has been criticized as a means of controlling the public. The police said they violated the degree and protested in public without permission. The incident occurred just minutes before Priyat Chinachat's motorcade arrived at the Rayong Hotel, where a visiting Egyptian air crew stayed last week, despite assurances that strict rules would apply to visiting foreign nationals. The 30 plus military personnel were allowed to leave the hotel and go shopping at two malls. And one of the Egyptian military personnel tested positive to the coronavirus. More than 1,400 residents came out to be tested for Chinese coronavirus and more than 200 schools were shut. Hopes for tourism recovery in the province have been crashed with 90% of hotel bookings and all reservations for Koh Samut an island off the coast of Rayong have been cancelled this week. Of course the people are angry and want to protest.
China is trying to create another naval route for its navy in an attempt to try to ward off any attempt by Australia or the Indian Navy to block its route. China has been looking into building a Suez Canal type structure through Thailand. This will be a massive 120 kilometer crossing cutting through the estuaries of Kra and named the Kra Canal. This will open a shortcut from the South China Sea into the Indian Ocean. This will avoid the Straits of Malacca controlled by the Indonesians, Malaysia and Singapore. In a conflict, the Chinese could be cut off from supplies from Australia, Indonesia, India and other Southeast Asian nations if a blockade was ever needed with a conflict with China. A blockade around the Straits of Malacca would be devastating for China. And the Malacca Straits can be easily blockaded by Australia, China, Indonesia and other countries, choking off China's West Asian oil supplies and also its general trade. At present, the Thai Prime Minister Priyat Achenacha is having feasibility studies done on this project, but it has found that returns from the Kra Canal will not be that lucrative. If the project goes ahead, this will give the Chinese Navy free access to the Andaman Sea where they can play to their heart's content. It will also put the Indian Navy on high alert, forcing the Indian Navy to respond. Thailand's Prime Minister Priyat Achenacha should rethink the building of the Kra Canal to maintain peace and stability in the whole area. Also, what do you think will be the first target in a military conflict with China? Thailand doesn't stand to gain anything by letting China eat into its territory and sovereignty. Thailand must realize it's part of the Asia bloc and must understand how China has been bullying all of its neighbors. China will use the canal to further its military and its economical ambitions, at the same time dragging Thailand into some conflicts it may not want to be entered into. Let's hope Thailand doesn't go down the rocky road China is walking down and end up being drawn into a debt trap like other Southeast Asian countries. The US to back nations whose South China Sea claims China violated. The United States will support countries that believes China has violated their territorial claims in the South China Sea. US Secretary of State Mike Pompei said on Wednesday, but stressed doing so in multilateral and legal forms. We will then go and use the tools that we have available and we will support countries all across the world who recognize that China has violated their legal territorial claims as well or maritime claims also. The US Secretary of State said we will provide the assistance we can whether that's in multilateral bodies, whether that's in Asian whether that's true legal responses, we will use all the tools we can, he said, referring to the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations. U.S. Secretary of State said the United States would treat Beijing's pursuit of resources in the disputed Rife Sea as illegal. It was the latest forceful statement by President Donald Trump's administration to challenge China. Top U.S. diplomats for East Asia warned of possible sanctions against Chinese officials and companies involved in what Washington described as coercion in the South China Sea. China said it was not afraid of any sanctions the United States might impose on it over situation in the South China Sea. Chinese foreign spokeswoman Hui Chanying told reporters during a briefing that Beijing hopes the US will not go further down the wrong path. And Beijing also accused Washington of stirring up trouble and destabilizing the region. And yes, she really did say that. The Chinese Communist Party claims 90% of the potentially energy-rich sea, but Brunei, Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, Vietnam also claim part of it. It's called sharing. But unfortunately, the Chinese Communist Party doesn't like to share its toys. Beijing has built bases on atolls in the region, but says its intentions are peaceful. And all the missiles and jet fighters it has on the islands are for peaceful purposes and are used for spotting fish in the area and bombing them. 
The United States has long opposed China's expansive territorial claims in the South China Sea. It has sent warships regularly through the strategic waters, through which three trillion trade passes each year to demonstrate freedom of navigation. While China has been demonstrating mass aggression against Southeast Asian countries in the region, bullying them and stealing their territory and building artificial military islands upon them. Oh, uh, like they said, for uh, peaceful purposes, of course. High school told they cannot arbitrarily cut students' hair. Thailand's Ministry of Education has issued a letter to all schools under its jurisdiction to abandon the 1975 regulation regarding their students' hairstyle and length. The letter forbids teachers from punishing their students by cutting their hair against their will. Last week, a 15-year-old student at Ying Cham, Yang Cham Noi Pitiakam in Soi Sakat province made headlines after her hair was cruelly cut by her teacher in front of other students during the flag-raising ritual. The victim, or student if you like, told reporters that the teacher deemed her hair too long because it was lower than her chin. The student's mother was so upset over the forced haircut which he described as deliberate attempt to shame the girl in front of her peers. She threatened to move her daughter to another school, but has since been asked not to do this. The incident, which has been posted on social media, has drawn widespread criticism of the school administration's behaviour. On May the 1st, new regulations were published, which will allow male and female students to wear their hair as they like, so long as it's tidy and appropriate. Perms, bleach jobs and facial hair remain forbidden. Looks like now Thai students can express their hair the way they feel.